Welcome to Change Life Deaf Church Bible Study. We're so happy that you've joined with us tonight, and we hope that your knowledge about God and His ways would increase every week. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for this time together in your Word, the Bible. We pray that your Spirit would continue to teach us about your plan about your ways. Help us to understand better how to live for you. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're continuing our study in the letter from Paul to the church in Philippi. And today we're going to talk about this topic. Preachers with Paul named Timothy and Epaphroditus. These two men, one was a young man, the other one was a little older, but the two of them traveled with Paul when he set up the churches. And later, we find out that Timothy became a pastor of one of the churches, and Paul also later wrote letters to him to help him as a pastor of the church, helping him understand how to run the church, okay? Today, we're going to be talking from chapter 2, verses 14 to 30. And we're going to see both of these men's names in this passage. Verses 14 and 15. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you will be blameless and pure, children of God without any fault. But you are living with evil people all around you who have lost their sense of what is right. Among those people, you should shine like lights in a dark world. In Paul's time, there was a lot of evil. Many people did not believe in God, just a few. The church was rather small. A few people believed. There was a lot of idol worship, and Paul knew that. And those people in the church at Philippi, they had given up their idols and began to worship God only. So Paul is telling them, you are living in an evil time. And those people don't believe they're in darkness. And Christian believers are like lights in the nighttime. And it's the same today. Christians are like a light in a dark world, the world full of evil. People have no sense or feeling of good, no feeling of what is right, don't know right and wrong. They don't care about right or holiness or purity. Christians 
We need to live like a light to show them the way. That is our goal as Christians. Verse 16, And you offer them teaching that gives life. So I can be proud of you when Jesus comes again. You will show that my work was not wasted, that I ran the race and won. Paul is comparing his life, and our life too, to like a race. We are striving to win, and the prize is what? Heaven, eternal life. We have teaching that will give life, eternal life, to people who hear it and accept it. And we need to be enthusiastic about giving it out. Teaching that gives life is what? The gospel. That will change a person and make that person pure and new. Many people don't want to hear it. But we, as Christians, we need to give it out and tell them not to be embarrassed, like we said before. Verse 17, your faith makes you give your lives as a sacrifice in serving God. Maybe I will have to offer my own life with your sacrifice. But if that happens... I will be glad, and I will share my joy with all of you. Remember, Paul is in prison. And he's talking about what? Is he troubled, sad, complaining? No, he wants to share the gospel about how much joy he has that they are proclaiming the gospel. And that is what gives Paul his joy. And that's really the heart of every pastor. He loves hearing that the people in the church are proclaiming the gospel. And our lives, what I want to do, my life, we don't care. It's what God wants, how I can help people to spread the gospel. And the gospel has to go out to the whole world. And it's not yet in the whole world. Not everyone has heard. Many people, especially deaf persons, don't know about Jesus. They don't know about living right, going to heaven, the devil. They don't know. They think that it's a funny thing when they hear about the devil, the red clothes and horns. No, we need to tell them the truth of the gospel. And sharing that truth is what brings joy to the person sharing and the pastor hearing about it. So we serve God with glad hearts. It's not a burden. Oh, I have to say something. No, I'm thrilled, eager to tell people about Jesus. Verse 18. You also should be glad and share your joy with me. Paul. Paul wants them to tell about Jesus, to share the gospel, and then tell him. Same in the church today. Your pastor wants to hear from you. Tell him, Oh, I went, I shared with someone 
about Jesus. The pastor will be happy. So the church is a happy place. A joyful place. For what? For sharing the gospel. For telling about Jesus. Verse 19. With the blessing of the Lord Jesus, I hope I will be able to send Timothy to you soon. I will be glad to learn how you are. Paul sends this young man, Timothy, to go to the church to find out how they're doing and come back and tell Paul. Now, if you want to learn more about Timothy, you can read in the book of Acts, chapter 16, 17, and 18, and also 20. You see that Timothy traveled around with Paul and helped him learn how to become a pastor. And later he did. Paul left him in several places to help the church grow and to teach the church. So Paul was planning to send Timothy to the church at Philippi. Verse 20, I have no one else like Timothy who genuinely cares for you. Timothy knows the church, same as Paul knows the church, and the two of them love that church at Philippi. And Timothy wants to visit there. So Paul tells him, yeah, you go there, and Timothy's enthusiastic. He's thrilled to go visit them because he cares about the church. Many pastors today, they love their church and they want to see them grow. They want to see them become firm believers. They don't want people in the church to be well, I think so, I'm not sure, weak in their faith. No. Paul is sending Timothy to help the church and find out how they're doing. Verse 21. Others, some others, are interested only in their own lives. They don't care about the work of Christ Jesus. Remember, Paul before tells about some people who were blocking his work. And even in prison, some were preaching about Jesus eagerly and some were selfishly getting gain for themselves about preaching. It's pretty much the same today. We don't care about a person accepting or not accepting we need to tell them God will touch and do the work in their hearts and change them. We don't have to try to make them, force them to change. We just tell them the message and that's it. God will change them. It's the work of Jesus Christ in their heart. Some people selfishly do not do the work of God, of Christ. And what's that work? Sharing the good news. And it's not only the pastors who should be sharing. If you are a believer, then you should share the good news. Verse 22. You know the kind of person Timothy is. He has served with me in telling the good news like a son with his father. Paul is very tender 
toward Timothy. He was a young man, and Paul was relatively old. But he looked at Timothy like a father and said, This is my son in the faith. And Timothy was eager about sharing the gospel. He was willing to travel with Paul. He didn't complain about the long trip or anything like that. He was willing and eager to go with Paul. So Timothy is eager to speak the good news to serve with Paul. Again, I want to emphasize the idea of serving. Paul never thought of himself as the pastor, the boss in the church and controlling everything. No. He said and called himself a servant. And Timothy served with Paul. Servanthood is a very important part of the Christian life. We need to be sure that we are serving God first and serving each other in the church. That is our goal. We should not be thinking, I'm becoming a leader, a boss in the church. No, think how I can serve the church. What can I do to help the church become stronger? Verse 23, I plan to send him to you quickly, as soon as I know what will happen to me. Paul is in prison, and he has a court date coming up, and he doesn't know what's going to happen, because either one of two things will happen. Either he'll go free, or they will kill him. That's it. Or he will just stay in prison for a long time. And we know that he was in prison for about two years or more. He just stayed there. No one talked to him. Nobody cared that he was in there. So Paul is hoping that something will change for him. Maybe he will be free or whatever. Then he will send Timothy to the church. So he's planning to send Timothy to Philippi. Verse 24 and 25. I am sure the Lord will help me come to you soon. For now, I think I must send Epaphroditus back to you. He is my brother in God's family, who works and serves with me in the Lord's army. When I need help, you sent him to me. So this man, Epaphroditus, he was from Philippi, the church. And they heard that Paul had some trouble or problems. He was in prison. And Epaphroditus came and helped Paul. Paul was happy to see him. So this is another brother from Philippi. Epaphroditus. Paul is planning to send him back to them as well. And we're going to see why. In verse 26 it says, But now he wants very much to see all of you again, and he's worried because you heard that he was sick. Epaphroditus had become sick somehow. Maybe he had the flu or some other sickness. We don't know, but... He was very sick. 
and the church heard about that, and they worried about him. What's going to happen to our brother in the Lord? What, what will happen? So Epaphroditus was sick. Paul was planning to send him back to let them know that he was okay. Verse 27. He was sick and near death, but God helped him and me too, so that I would not have even more grief. Paul was afraid that Epaphroditus would die. So God had mercy on the two of them. He was healed, and Paul was comforted. So he was healed from his sickness. Okay? Verse 28. So I want very much to send him to you. When you see him, you can be happy, and I can stop worrying about you. Paul would like to have Epaphroditus and Timothy, both of them, with him, but he knew that the church was worried about them, so he's going to send him. So Paul didn't worry about himself being alone. He sent those two to let them know that he was okay. So Paul is going to send him to Philippi. Verse 29. Welcome him in the Lord with much joy. Give honor to people like Epaphroditus. And maybe he became a leader in the church there because he was a good man. He followed Jesus Christ. He taught well. Paul was sure that he would help the church. He is to be honored. Honor people like Epaphroditus. Boy, that's a long name. Paul said people leading in the church, people who are good teachers, good pastors, they should be honored. Why? Because they're doing the work for God. They're not working for selfish gain. They're working for God giving up what they want, what they want to do, and do what God wants instead. Those people deserve honor. Verse 30. He should be honored because he almost died for the work of Christ. He put his life in danger so that he could help me. This was help that you could not give me. Paul was separated from the church and they couldn't help him. What are they going to do? So they send Epaphroditus to help Paul from our church group. So that was what Paul was very appreciative of that they sent him to help him. So Epaphroditus helped Paul till he was almost died. Maybe he got sick while he was traveling, whatever. But he almost died helping Paul. But God had more work for him so that he could go back to Philippi. This is a very interesting story about Paul, that Paul has good people working with him, and he was always eager to share the gospel. He was eager about the churches. He wanted to hear from them, make sure that they were growing and becoming stronger. I encourage you to read in Acts chapter 16 on 
to learn this story about these two men. Now, what to remember from this passage? One, don't complain or argue. That's kiddie things. Let us go on with each other. All of us belong to the same family. Let's not argue, complain about each other. Remember, everyone has good days and everyone has bad days in life. So maybe your brother or sister in the Lord argues with you one day. Maybe they're having a bad day. Forgive them. Because someday, maybe you will have a bad day. Let us forgive each other and get along with each other. Two says, Christians live right as an example to the world. We need to show the world that we are different. God has made us different, has changed us to become pure in His sight. We want to show the world God's way is true and the best way. His goodness is true. His joy, His love is true. That's what we need to be the example of. We need to show God is good all the time and show that God saves people through Jesus Christ dying on the cross. Why did he die? Why did he resurrect? Why can he forgive sins? We can explain. And to show God changes a life. From darkness to light, from sin to purity, from evil to good. We need to show that God will do that. And number three, the teaching that we have brings life. And we should be eager to give people that teaching. That teaching gives us right living here on earth. We can live holy and pure before God here on earth, and there's a promise of future eternal life in heaven. That's the gospel message. A good life here a pure life here, and eternal life in heaven. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you so much for bringing us the good news. Help us to share with others, our friends and families, our co-workers, every place, that your light will come through us to touch hearts of people all around us. Help us to live right in this dark world. Bless everyone watching. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you so much for watching. See you again next week. Thank you so much for watching us tonight. We hope that your heart was touched by God's Word, and we hope that you learned something about the Word tonight. Please give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, press the thumbs up, and also the red subscribe button. It will help us to get the video out to all over the world, so that many deaf will see the videos.
Okay? God bless you, and good night, and we'll see you again next week, same time, 7.30. Take care of yourself. Thank you.